AM 560, The Answer. The content and information on Real Estate Airwaves is for informational purposes only and should not be regarded as legal advice. Real Estate Airwaves does not provide legal advice and make no warranty or representation regarding the information on the show. Real Estate Airwaves shall not assume any liability for damages of any kind whatsoever relating to the use, misuse, or reliance of this information. The listener should conduct their own investigations, analysis, due diligence, draw their own conclusions, and make their own decisions. Any areas concerning taxes or specific legal or technical questions should be referred to lawyers, accountants, consultants, brokers, or other professionals licensed, qualified, or authorized to render such advice. No fluff, no hype, no gurus. You're listening to Real Estate Airwaves on AM560, The Answer. Get the inside information you need to find, fund, fix, and flip real estate in today's market. Joshua Ingalls and Vincent Pace share their secrets to minimize risk, maximize profit, and get deals done. We're pulling the curtain back and sharing the knowledge you need to succeed in real estate. And now, your hosts, Joshua and Vincent. Happy New Year! Today, we are going to be talking about how to find rental deals. The number here is 855-5-AIRWAVES, or you can visit realestateairwaves.com. You're listening to Real Estate Airwaves, and my name is Joshua Ingalls. I'm an active real estate investor. Over the last three years, I flipped over 60 fix-and-flip deals, and I'm also an active real estate agent with United Real Estate. And I'm Vincent Pace. I head up Barnett Real Estate Investment Finance, and we provide short-term capital to real estate investors. We've funded millions over the past few years, and we'd like you to be our next client. So today is a really exciting topic because we're talking about building your long-term wealth. Flipping is a definitely something that you're going to be making a lot of money doing, But you should be taking that money that you work hard at and actively and invest that into passive income. And rental properties, in my opinion, is the best way to do that. One thing to remember about flipping is it only produces as long as you're focusing on it. Rental income offers a different opportunity where you can go take a few weeks off and you'll find that it keeps producing by and large. Yeah, I look at flipping as a job. You can systematize flipping Uh, to a certain extent, but as soon as you stop flipping, that income stops coming in. So finding buildings and finding rental properties, you should definitely check out realestateairwaves.com. We have all of our episodes podcasted there, and you can listen to various strategies on how to acquire properties. So a lot of the same strategies you use to find flip properties You can also apply that to purchasing rentals and finding rental properties as well. And that's that's mostly true for the smaller ones. The larger you get and the farther you get away from residential, the more the the methods vary. But if you're looking for, say, two to four units, that's going to be almost exactly the same as finding a single-family home to flip in many ways. There are some free strategies that you can use, which we've talked about before, which is Craigslist. Craigslist is essentially an online catalog, kind of like the newspaper, And people post ads there for everything from for rents, for sales, and even garage sales. So let's talk about each of those. So when somebody lists a property on Craigslist for sale, this is probably an investor or perhaps even a real estate agent. But if they're putting it on Craigslist, this probably means they're pretty aggressive. And you'll probably be looking at some sort of discount. So, of course, looking at for sales You want to start there, but also look at for rent ads. Sometimes you'll encounter landlords who, for whatever reason, maybe they they were renting out their place and they had a bad tenant, and now they're looking to rent it again, and they're tired of being a landlord. And so when you look at for rent ads, it's always a good idea to call them and also see if perhaps they're interested in selling. Very often when someone is looking to rent, they're an investor. So if you come to them with the right offer to buy, they're going to be willing to buy as well. Um, you'll, you'll sometimes see this just around your neighborhood even. There's a, a property down the street from my house where every time it's uh, vacant, where the, the last tenant leaves, they put for sale and for rent signs out. Uh, my guess is their asking price is a little too high because they keep renting it, but those are the kinds of investors you're going to find who are holding rental properties, always looking for the right buyer to come along and buy the property from them. Yeah, sometimes these landlords might not only have that property, perhaps, you know, we have a cold winter and 
perhaps they're looking to move to Florida and they have 30 to 40 rental properties that they've acquired, you can be a great resource for these landlords. So you need to position yourself as being able to help them with all of their rental properties. This is a good opportunity. You can wholesale the ones that you want to wholesale and then the ones that are great for yourself, you can use those to uh, acquire rentals. And then we've talked about garage sales in the past too. A lot of times if somebody's having a garage sale, it might be an indication that they're looking to sell. So never hurts to reach out to them and find out if they're possibly looking to sell as well. And we've talked a lot about public records. Uh, again, revisit episodes one and two at realestateairwaves.com for more info on that. But you can also look up evictions. Now, evictions are a very, very powerful thing that you can look up because these are landlords that probably are property owners that are probably not managing it very well or they had a problematic tenant and that's why they're evicting them. So we can come in at these properties and provide value because either they're either going to have to probably fix up the house and re-rent it out or we can come in and buy it and then turn that into one of our rental properties. Episodes one and two also covered wholesalers, which are, you know, obviously a great source for single family homes, but there's no reason they can't be for larger properties as well. Um, often wholesalers will find deals that are of smaller nature, so it's unlikely they're going to bring you a 40 unit building, but they might bring you a two unit, a three unit, a four unit. So if you're looking to build a smaller rental pool, wholesalers will be an equally uh, valuable source as they are with single family homes. And of course, some paid advertising that you can do is direct mail. Direct mail, in my opinion, is the best paid advertising way to do marketing. So with direct mail, you're sending letters to people in foreclosure, people in probate, perhaps divorce situations, and you're telling them that you're here to help and you'd like to make an offer on their property. And again, you would be doing this in areas that you're looking to acquire rental properties. And direct mail goes great hand-in-hand hand with public records. So you can, beyond the, the things that Josh just mentioned, you know, another thing to consider is out-of-state owners. Often they'll be investors, and again, with the right offer, they might be willing to part with the property that you could then hold as a rental. And you could also do what are called bandit signs. These are the signs you see on the side of the road that say, we buy houses for cash. Now, again, in the wintertime, it's hard to do those because the ground is frozen solid. So good luck trying to get stakes in the ground. Uh, it's not fun. I've tried it. Um, but bandit signs, again, are exactly what they sound like. Uh, now that I'm a real estate agent, I can no longer advertise using bandit signs because it's considered blind marketing. But if you're not licensed, it is a strategy that you can use. But keep in mind, some of these cities will try to find you and they'll try to find out who you are so bandit signs are great if you're not licensed uh, but again check your local ordinances and uh, make sure that uh, you are allowed to do them or you're just going to have to take that risk and again the bandit signs are largely going to get you smaller rental properties single family homes uh, small unit count properties you know you're not going to find your big apartment building through bandit signs generally you may of course and, of course, we've talked a lot about print advertisements. You know, I've gotten deals, believe it or not, out of a phone book. Print advertising works great for usually older people. So you can run ads in certain areas, again, that you might have rental properties or looking to acquire rental properties. And you're going to usually have what I call grandma specials. These are the houses with the shag carpet, and the avocado green appliances. We are a good solution to come in and buy these properties. Most of the people reading the newspapers, phone books, usually these are the older people. We can come in and help them buy their houses as is, and they don't have to worry about fixing up the house or cleaning it out. Another way to go about this is using actually posted print ads like billboards. You can even have things like bench advertisements, those sorts of things. Um, they can get you out in front of people who might not otherwise be seeing you searching for these sort of multifamily properties and lead deals that can provide rental income for you. 
Yeah, I've seen some investors uh, in Chicago. Again, I'm not advocating this, but they use uh, almost like bumper stickers, and they place them at metro stations, all sort of things, and they, they have a simple message saying, we buy houses. And if you're going to do billboards, something you may want to look into is what are called remnants. Now, what remnants are, it's a time between when somebody pays for a full-priced advertisement and before someone else buys a full-priced advertisement. And usually, you can get your billboard up for about half the price. So looking into remnants and billboards is a great way, again, to advertise and possibly get rental properties. The number here is 855-5-AIRWAVES, or you can visit realestateairwaves.com. Stay tuned. We're going to be talking about using the MLS to find properties. Mortgage rates are still near historic lows. If you're looking to buy your first home, upgrade, downsize, invest, or refinance, contact Matthew Ewald from First Advantage Mortgage, a Draper & Kramer company. Matthew's been a trusted mortgage consultant for over 13 years and has options to fit your unique needs. With 40-plus investors, call Matthew today at 630-376-0484. That's 630-376-0484. Or apply online at MortgageChicagoLand.com. Company NMLS 2551, NMLS 198323, Illinois Residential Mortgage Licensee, Equal Housing Lender. If you want to do real estate deals, you need to learn the systems. Visit fliptoriches.com for info on workshops happening the first Tuesday of every month. Meet me, Joshua Ingalls, and other active real estate investors in the Chicagoland area. We give the most value possible with networking and information for new and seasoned investors. We meet the first Tuesday of every month at 3009 North Kedzie in Chicago at 6 p.m. Check out fliptoriches.com. That's fliptoriches.com for all the info now. Need capital for your real estate investment? Let Barnett Real Estate Investment Finance be your partner for fast, flexible, and certain capital. Since 2008, they've funded millions of home flippers, landlords, auction buyers, wholesalers, and more. And they'd like their next deal to be with you. Submit your preliminary application now at barnettcapital.com slash prelim or call them at 224-205-7266. Again, that's 224-205-7266. AM 560, The Answer. It's all about making money with real estate. Now, back to Real Estate Airwaves on AM 560, The Answer. Welcome back. Today we are talking about how to find your rental deals. Now, another source that should be kind of in any toolkit and searching for real estate investment properties is going to be the MLS, the multiple listing service that brokers use to find and list properties. This is a service that you can get access to in a few different ways, uh, either indirectly via a broker by becoming a broker yourself or becoming a broker's assistant, which we've talked about in, in past episodes. So the MLS can be a powerful tool for a number of reasons. First of all, it's sort of a central clearinghouse for single family and smaller multi-unit properties. So you can have things set up on there that will actually kick out results to you automatically. So you can set up automatic searches. And if, you're, if you don't have access directly, you can work with a broker to get these set up. So you can set up some sort of criteria, say four or less units in some zip code under this price, and those searches can come to you automatically so you can have a regular feed of what's going on in the market on the MLS. Yeah, the automatic searches is extremely powerful because you can do a searches for a variety of different things. For example, sometimes I'll even target properties that have been listed for 180 days or more. And once I see that a property is listed for 180 days or more, it's set up automatically to send it to me that way. I know that these sellers are starting to, I don't want to say get desperate, but they're probably their motivation is starting to increase for selling. And you're not as much competition as when a property is brand new. So you could set up searches for a variety of different things. And then, of course, you also want to see all new listings. And you could set up automatic searches at 5 a.m., 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 10 o'clock at night. So you're constantly getting that fresh information. Because, again, great deals do not last long. 
So whether you're looking yourself or you're working with an agent to look, there's several kinds of properties that are going to pop out as, as likely candidates for you to check out to see if it makes a good rental transaction. So one of those is going to be REO, and that stands for real estate owned, and it's usually real estate owned by banks and other entities that have foreclosed on properties that were once owned by others. So they'll have a pool of these properties in their under, under management looking to sell typically. Um, they end up making good deals because often they need work. There's something wrong with the property, and the banks will, over time, they'll typically cut the price slowly but surely. They may not have your price right away, but over time they'll cut the price on some sort of schedule that they've set internally, and you'll eventually be able to get a fairly decent deal if the price goes down to your price point. So it's something that you can keep an eye on. Yeah, usually with REOs, Fannie Mae's, Freddie Macs, they usually want pretty close to the list price. So if a property is listed for 200000 usually they're not going to take less than like 196000 They want very close to list price, typically, for REOs. Now with HUDs, I have had a lot of luck with HUDs where I've been able to get them at uh, much lower than their advertised listed price. But those were HUD properties that were listed longer. And with REOs, if you have a good relationship with the listing agent or perhaps you go into the property, find out when they do the MSR. Now, if you say MSR, you're speaking the REO broker's language. What MSR stands for is monthly status report. Now, what this is, is every real estate broker that has a REO listing with the bank, they have to tell the bank, What's the property condition of the house? Is it the same as it was last time? Perhaps there's a new issue. Perhaps uh, the copper was stolen. So the banks need to be updated monthly on these properties. And if you can find out when the MSR is done, sometimes you can make an offer before they do the price drop. Because usually after an MSR happens, a lot of times the bank will do a price reduction if they haven't gotten any offers. So if you make that offer after they do the MSR, but before they do the price drop, sometimes you'll beat the rest of the competition out there uh, to the punch, and they won't even know that the price was going to get reduced, and then you avoid the multiple offer situation. And it is interesting to note that these prices will occur, these price drops will occur with some kind of regularity. We had this uh, property that we actually looked at ourselves a while back, and it had a very peculiar set of circumstances. The previous, one of the previous owners had cut a hole in the wall without really being an engineer or anything to open a sort of makeshift barbershop or something on the side. And so it had structural issues that needed to be dealt with, and this door just kind of being cut arbitrarily into the wall. And the price at which the bank had it didn't allow for construction to do that. And, you know, we looked at it quickly and said, this is way overpriced. There's no way this this is going to get done at this price. It's got to come down a lot. So we kind of took our eye off that ball, and it sat there for a long time. Maybe a year later, a property crosses my desk as a lender, and it's got the same issue. And I was like, wow, that looks familiar. And suddenly I put it together. That was the exact property. And the bank, over time, had bought, brought the price down by... I don't remember if it was 60, 80 grand. It was a fair amount, but it over like clockwork over the year, they brought it down. So if you find a good REO deal, but it's not at the price you want, keep your eye on it. It's probably going to come back later because it's probably not the price others wanted at either. Yeah. Uh, again, with these REOs, uh, you have it set up. You can actually set up the MLS again where you actually flag certain properties. So you can track the property. And then once it starts getting to the price that it's going to make sense for you, then you want to kind of track those MSRs and when those price drops occurred. And then you can somewhat time when that next price drop is going to occur so you can make your offer accordingly. And then there are what I call grandma specials or estate sales. I kind of talked about it on the last segment. Usually these homes are in decent shape. You know, usually they're not falling apart like a lot of the REO properties. Um, but they are very dated. Again, a lot of times they have the old cabinets or the very old appliances. Perhaps the windows might be original to the house. Now, these properties, sometimes they'll come on the MLS and they will be priced right. If you come across an estate sale that's priced right, give them full price for a quick close 
and you will increase your chances of getting it. So if it's listed today for, let's just say, 200000 I might even give them an offer for two hundred one if it's priced correctly and put on there a three-week close. Um, so a lot of times when it's listed at a price, that's exactly what the seller's looking for. Another thing you're going to want to use the MLS to search for is short sales. Uh, a short sale is simply a sale of a property for less than what's currently owed on the property. And in those cases, the the lender that's owed that money is basically saying, okay, we'll accept this. You know, we, we lent 100 but we see we're never going to get 100 back. We'll accept a sale for $80. Uh, those allow you to get deals that you might not otherwise be able to get because of the lending amount on there that needs to be cleared. Yeah, the thing you want to keep in mind is just because a property is listed for a certain number, it's not like REOs where they want a hundred, you know, ninety nine percent of the list price. A lot of times, you can get offers accepted much lower than the list price. The key to short sales, which um, you'll want to to do, is be present at the BPOs, and the BPO is essentially the bank's valuation of the property, and you want to be present there so you can show the bank and show this BPO agent what all the issues are with the home. Now, the first step, of course, to getting your offer to the bank is convincing the owner to accept your offer. And then once they sign off, then it gets presented to the bank. The lender is often going to be looking at this as, you know, oh, if I have to foreclose on this property, I'm going to incur X in legal costs. It's going to take X in time. It's going to need X in maintenance. And they just sum up these numbers, and that allows them to be more flexible in terms of what they can accept on a short sale basis. Yeah, and remember, patience is key with short sales. They do take a long time, and there is a lower probability of them closing. So you want to put a lot of them in your pipeline. But some of my best deals have been short sales. And again, you can also have brokers, if it's on the MLS, do inspections for you. A lot of my rental properties that I've purchased, I've had real estate brokers do inspections for me. They prepare a report with how's the area, what are the rents in the area, how much are the repairs that are needed. What's the bedroom bathroom count? What, is there a garage? You know what they give me an entire report, and that way I can analyze several deals without me having to physically go out and look at a bunch of deals. So you can set up real estate brokers to do these inspections for you. Usually a buyer's agent. That's a that's a great way to take advantage of the broker's access to the MLS and their ability to get in the properties when you otherwise couldn't without them there. The number here is 855-5-AIRWAVES, or you can visit realestateairwaves.com. The first 50 people to contact us will be getting copy of some of the advertising that we use in newspapers and Craigslist. We'll see you soon. You're an investor, a lender in commercial real estate, or you're an attorney, and you use a title company. National Title Solutions wants a chance to be your title company. Give them a shot at your business, and you'll find out why they're the best choice. Most title companies keep banking hours and have no flexibility. National Title Solutions will do whatever it takes on your timetable. You'll save money, too. Give them an opportunity and see the difference. Convenient offices all over. National Title Solutions. Call 800-NTS-2700. 800-NTS-2700. This is Joshua Ingalls, broker with United Real Estate and radio show host. When I need to pre-qualify a buyer, I use Matthew Ewald from First Advantage Mortgage, a Draper & Kramer company. I've worked with Matthew for over two years, and I highly recommend him to all my clients and investors. Call Matthew Ewald today at 630-376-0484. That's 630-376-0484, or apply online at MortgageChicagoLand.com. Company NMLS 2551, NMLS 198323, Illinois Residential Mortgage Licensee, Equal Housing Lender. The Chicagoland Real Estate Investment Group invites you to build your network in real estate investing and learn from the region's experts. There's no charge to attend, and there won't be any hard sell for expensive courses. Join us on the fourth Monday each month in the North Shore. For more information, visit us at meetup.com slash ChicagolandREI. Again, that's meetup.com slash ChicagolandREI. Meetup.com slash ChicagolandREI. Need capital for your real estate investment? Let Barnett Real Estate Investment Finance be your partner for fast, flexible, and certain capital. Since 2008, they've funded millions of home flippers, landlords, auction buyers, wholesalers, and more. 
and they'd like their next deal to be with you. Submit your preliminary application now at barnettcapital.com slash prelim or call them at 224-205-7266. Again, that's 224-205-7266. AM 560, the answer. Now, back to the show that gives you the insider info. Real Estate Airwaves on AM 560, the answer. Today we are talking about how to find real estate investment rental properties, properties that can generate cash flow for you. So in the previous two segments, we've been focusing on methods that will help you find not only single family homes, but also smaller rental unit properties. We're going to dive in this, this segment into larger properties. And this veers us out of the kind of stuff that overlaps with the single family fix and flip business into more commercial things. So these sorts of things will be more applicable when you're looking for multifamily properties when they're five or more. The smaller numbers of five or more you can sometimes find on the MLS as well, but the larger you get, the less likely they are to be on there. Um, And also things like retail, office, and industrial. So the two most common sources uh, are CoStar and LoopNet. I believe CoStar bought LoopNet. Is that right, Josh? Correct, yep. Yeah, and th- these are basically the MLS of larger properties. They're, they're the, the central clearinghouse for these sorts of things. They're the main place that everybody lists, everybody looks when they're buying one of these properties. Um, and that's going to be a place where you can get access to these. Now, there is a cost to search for these, um, and it's, it's not cheap. However, you can work with a broker who can help you get access to these. And, you know, these brokers will they'll help you do searches. I presume you can set up automatic searches, although I've never had one set up myself. Um, Josh is nodding that you can. Um, so they're, they can be used in a very similar fashion to the MLS. So basically you can apply much of what we said in our last segment to CoStar, LoopNet, and maybe local websites that are similar to those and attack it in the exact same way you would the MLS for smaller properties. Yeah, the cost for LoopNet is going to be, depending on the package that you get, you can get some pretty affordable packages on LoopNet. Um, LoopNet is like a watered-down version of CoStar, CoStar, you're talking uh, 350 and up for access to CoStar, uh, $350 a month. So, but it is a lot more detailed. You can pull a lot more comprehensive comps. But again, that's why you need to have a good commercial broker that you're working with, uh, because they're going to have access to these tools. And again, they can set these searches up for you for free. Now, you can also. You know, we've talked about driving for dollars. Well, the same is true when you're talking about commercial. Now, you want to be looking for for sale signs and for rent signs. A lot of times, commercial properties, sometimes they're not listed in the MLS. Sometimes they're not listed in LoopNet or CoStar. Um, A lot of commercial brokers do not like advertising their properties out there on the internet and the reason why this is uh, a common factor with commercial is because a lot of commercial brokers no offense commercial brokers but a lot of them are greedy and they want both sides of the commission so a lot of times they send it to their inner circle first before they blast it out all over the internet so a lot of times the only way that you might know about these properties is by seeing for sale signs or for rent signs And reach out to these brokers and try to get into their inner circle and get on their email lists because a lot of times you'll be getting access to properties that other people might not even know about unless they're on their email list as well. Yeah, I think pretty much every commercial broker has an email list, and it's and they'll send it to their whole list. It's easy to get on them. Um, You know, I have a regular inflow of these properties in my inbox all the time. So that's something you should definitely sign up for. Another thing you can you can do is just look look around for dilapidated commercial buildings. Um, you know, this is very similar, similar to something we, talk, we spoke about with regards to single-family homes. What are the signs that something's dilapidated? Well, on a commercial property, you might see things like bad parking lots, uh, abandoned buildings, uh, strip malls with only a couple tenants. Uh, then you got to kind of dive in. Then you're going back to public records, trying to locate the owners, uh, using any sort of the tools that we've discussed at other times to f- track down these people through the public records and ultimately try and get in touch with them and see if they're willing to accept some kind of offer for you to take the property off of their hands. 
Yeah, there's so many different ways that you can see a commercial property is in distress. Again, when there's an abandoned building, there's a good chance that either it's a foreclosure. Uh, sometimes you can uh, find the bank that might own that property. Sometimes there's a private owner and they're just doing a very bad job at placing tenants or perhaps they have a bad property manager. And property managers are someone you need to network with because a lot of times they have the inside track uh, when a commercial property, when an owner is thinking about selling it down the line. A lot of property managers will actually turn into listing agents. I know a lot of commercial brokers that are only property managers for the simple reason that a lot of times they get these back-end listings. So these are good people you want to network with. Then a last source that we'll dive into on the next segment is, of course, commercial brokers. You're going to want to be speaking to a lot of these. Um, and especially when you're trying to underwrite properties, they'll be crucial in figuring out you know, what sort of values you can expect in a given market. And we'll dive into that in detail in the next segment. Yeah, again, the number here is 855-5-AIRWAVES, or you can visit realestateairwaves.com. Dot com. The first 50 people to contact us will be getting a copy of the advertising that we use in newspapers, phone books, and Craigslist. We'll see you soon. Real estate agents are cheap. Many agents will only market your home on the MLS and put a sign up. Demand more. Joshua Ingalls invests in aggressive marketing, including high-def video, 3D virtual tours, professional photography, a custom website, and mailers, so you can get the most amount of money for your home in the shortest amount of time. Call Joshua Ingalls, broker with United Real Estate Chicago at 630-544-1504 for a free home valuation or visit hometeamil.com to learn more. Need capital for your real estate investment? Let Barnett Real Estate Investment Finance be your partner for fast, flexible, and certain capital. Since 2008, they've funded millions of home flippers, landlords, auction buyers, wholesalers, and more. And they'd like their next deal to be with you. Submit your preliminary application now at barnettcapital.com slash prelim or call them at 224-205-7266. Again, that's 224-205-7266. AM 560, The Answer. Now, back to the show with real estate info you won't find anywhere else. Real Estate Airwaves is on AM 560, The Answer. Welcome back. This is Real Estate Airwaves. The number here is 855-5-AIRWAVES, or you can visit realestateairwaves.com. The first 50 people to contact us will be getting a copy of the advertising that we use in newspapers, phone books, and Craigslist. So we're going to be talking about how to work with commercial brokers and the different types of commercial brokers that there are. A lot of times, I mean, commercial, there's a big spectrum of commercial properties. Again, you have office, you have multifamily, you have retail, you have warehouse. A lot of times the brokers that specialize in commercial usually specialize in one property type. Now, there are some brokers that will branch out and do multiple property types, but most of them are specialized. So the the brokerages will vary in, in size and scope. So on the smaller end, you might find that the same people who will sell you your single family homes can get you two to four unit multifamilies, but then they can also have, they might also have a division that does bigger stuff. So you might be able to go to the exact same place you go to find your single family deals. And it's probably another person, another individual who focuses on that but often under the same roof. So you'll find that you can get small commercial, five to 10 unit properties maybe from the same group that's selling you your single family home. Now to go up a notch, you've kind of got a, there's a range of big commercial players, you know, nationwide. Some of the common names are CBRE, Cushman and Wakefield, Marcus and Millichap. Um, these are the people who you may want to reach out to to get on their list. You know, I mentioned before that I get these in my inbox regularly, and these are some of the groups that I see in my inbox almost daily. And they have all sorts of deals of all sorts of nature that you can look at and have a steady inflow of deals hitting you right in the in the inbox. Yeah, even Remax and Century 21 have a commercial division, again, like what Vince mentioned. 
Another one you want to check out is Sperry Van Ness. They also do a lot of auctions, and auctions a lot of times are ways to pick up commercial properties as well. So you want to be in tuned uh, with some of the auctions. And then some of your local um, brokerages. So, for example, here in the Plainfield, Naperville, Joliet area, a one of the commercial brokers that I see a lot of, they're, they're a group called Caton Commercial. So you want to start getting out there, meeting these people, and networking with them. And again, you want to find out what's their specialty. Are they a multifamily broker? Are they a retail broker? Are they office? Are they warehouse? And get connected with that broker that specializes in the property type that you're looking to purchase. So that rolls us right into the next topic. These are the kinds of brokers that are out there. These are the people you're going to be looking for, but how, how do you find them? So the first and obvious place is just, you know, go searching on the Internet. What area you're looking in, what kind of properties you're looking at for. Um, see what comes up when you look for that sort of property in the area you're looking for. Often you're going to see some of these names we mentioned, and you might find local players that you know are, are very specialized in their market or maybe they're specialized in the property type in the area you're at. That's obviously your, your first point of attack. Then beyond that, there's networking. Um, and, you know, you're networking here with, sort of larger players. So it's a little bit more formal than you might find at these sort of real estate uh, investment groups that focus on single fam and smaller multifamily properties, smaller rental properties. So typically you're going to want to get yourself in a suit and tie to kind of uh, fit the bill. You know, you're marketing to a different sort of segment. So, you know, know your client and kind of present what is going to be most likely to get the deal closed. You got to boot up and suit up. <laughs> these are, again, like what Vince is saying, uh, when you go to a commercial networking group and if you show up in jeans and a t-shirt you're really going to be out of place so you got to kind of uh fit the uh and, and blend in you want to wear uh dress up and some of the ones if you're in the chicago area that you might want to check out um there's one called ria.org www.ria.org and that's a real estate investment association and usually these are a lot of times downtown developers, city planners attend these meetings. Um, even if you're not looking to do commercial, this is a great place to network and meet people. Uh, but keep in mind, you know, door entry for these networking groups is not like your typical uh, meetings that you go to otherwise. You might be spending over $100 just to get into the door. And to take a step back and say, well, how do I find out where these meetings are in my area? Just go back to the Internet and go back to other networking events. And, you know, you feel around, you start talking to enough people, you'll, you'll be able to shake it out. Yeah, and again, this is all about getting on these brokers' mailing lists. This is, again, a lot of these commercial brokers want both sides of the commission, so they may not advertise it anywhere besides their inner circle. And so you want to get on their property types, and you want to be able to speak the lingo that commercial brokers talk. So you want to say things like know what uh, triple net lease is and what cap rate is. This is going, again, to help you build um, your credibility with these brokers. And if you're going out and going to these networking meetings, you don't necessarily want to have your uh, business cards that say we buy houses. You might want to have something on there uh, geared more towards commercial so you might want to make special business cards just for these networking events and when you meet with commercial brokers and we'll have more for you on the lingo in our next episode when we're going to talk about analyzing rentals uh, another thing that you can do is just go in the area you're looking at and look for for sale and for lease signs and figure out who the brokers are who are doing those and actually call them and ask them questions. When we're underwriting properties as a lender, we often do this. We get the opinion of several brokers who are active in the area and know the market to make sure that the numbers that we're looking at for this property are safe and that the loan that we're trying to put out on this property is safe. You can do the same thing to try and find deals by using these brokers in the same way we do to underwrite them. Yeah, and when you talk to these brokers, make sure you communicate that you're looking for value add properties. We're looking for distressed properties where we can bring value. The number here is 855-5-AIRWAVES, or you can visit realestateairwaves.com. The first 50 people to contact us will be getting a copy of the marketing that we use for Craigslist and the newspaper. See you soon. 
You're an investor, a lender in commercial real estate, or you're an attorney, and you use a title company. National Title Solutions wants a chance to be your title company. Give them a shot at your business, and you'll find out why they're the best choice. Most title companies keep banking hours and have no flexibility. National Title Solutions will do whatever it takes on your timetable. You'll save money, too. Give them an opportunity and see the difference. Convenient offices all over. National Title Solutions. Call 800-NTS-2700. 800-NTS-2700. Need capital for your real estate investment? Let Barnett Real Estate Investment Finance be your partner for fast, flexible, and certain capital. Since 2008, they've funded millions of home flippers, landlords, auction buyers, wholesalers, and more. And they'd like their next deal to be with you. Submit your preliminary application now at barnettcapital.com slash prelim or call them at 224-205-7266. Again, that's 224-205-7266. AM 560, The Answer. It's all about making money with real estate. Now, back to Real Estate Airwaves on AM 560, The Answer. Welcome back. Today, we are talking about how to find properties, rental properties, whether that be residential or commercial. And again, last segment, we were talking about uh, networking with these commercial brokers. One thing you want to keep in mind when you're talking to commercial brokers is be specific. What type of property are you looking to acquire? You can't just say, I'm looking to acquire commercial properties. They'll look, like, look at you like you're an alien from Mars. You need to be very, very specific on, I'm looking for multifamily properties between 20 and 40 units, or I'm looking for retail space um, with this much square footage. And again, this way, these commercial brokers can go to work for you and be more specific. So we started this topic talking about you know how to find the smaller properties. And these methods largely lined up with the same way you're going to find single-family properties to flip. So we talked about Websites like Craigslist, public records, wholesalers. You know, these are things we covered in episodes one and two and more details. So you can go back there and check those out. We also spoke about direct mail, banded signs, print ads, billboards. Again, all things in episodes one and two. So go back there for more detail. Then we dove into the MLS and how that can be used for these kinds of properties. Similar to what we've talked about before in finding these, you can use these to set up automatic searches. You can use these to work with agents, and you can extend that relationship to have the agents actually help you get into the properties and kind of do an inspection so you know what to expect before you acquire it. We then dove into how to do the larger properties. So we kind of moved away from the things that are more in common with the single-family properties to larger commercial properties where it's sort of separate and different. We talked about CoStar and LoopNet and similar sort of local databases that function like the MLS, but they allow you to access even larger properties. We talked about the importance of working with commercial brokers and how they can provide a window into a market that they're focusing on every day that you may not have the same time or network to get into. Get on their mailing lists and use them as a resource to help you acquire commercial properties. And we are 2017 now. So what are your specific goals you have for this year? You know, we're talking a lot about rental properties. Is your goal to acquire rental properties? Well, you need to be specific. And goal setting is something that everyone needs to do because if you don't have goals, you have no idea of where you're going and you're just flying by the wind. So goals are very important, but you want to set what are called SMART goals. Now, what SMART goals are is they're specific, they're measurable, attainable, meaning that this is something that's realistic and relevant, and it's time-bound. So, for example, if you want to purchase rental properties, how many rental properties do you want to purchase, and when do you want to have those rental properties, and Google Smart Goals, this is something you should definitely be looking into so that way you can set proper goals for yourself for 2017. I'm really excited about this year. I'm sure you are too, and I am really looking forward to the things that we're going to do this year, and I hope that you will set goals listening uh, to the show. Again, the number here is 855-5-AIRWAVES. You can visit realestateairwaves.com. The first 50 people to contact us will be getting a copy of the Marketing 
that we use uh, to find rental properties. Well, I hope to meet you on January 3rd. We're going to have our meeting at 3009 North Kedzie. You can visit fliptoriches.com to learn more. We'll see you next week. You've been listening to Real Estate Airwaves on AM560, The Answer. Come back next Sunday at noon for more insider real estate information from Joshua and Vincent. You can listen to past shows, contact them, and get free exclusive content at realestateairwaves.com. That's realestateairwaves.com. 